so on. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the episode of Connecting with Calm's Phone. This is episode number 37. Now for those who haven't met me before, my name, my name is Sam Lee and I'm the founder of Connecting with Confidence Academy and I'll be the interviewer interviewing Calm's. So how are you being, Calm's? Oh, awesome, Sam. Just really busy <laughs> trying to do too many things at once, I think. Mm, juggling many things eh, at once. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's good to be busy, eh? So if you're if you're not busy, then you're not doing anything like productive, I guess. Yeah. Cool. So um, yeah, tell me about your weekend. What did you do over the weekend? Anything special, or what? What did you do? You know, like it's Freedom Week in uh, Sydney, but I'm not vaccinated, so I don't oh, have really? freedom like everyone else at the moment. So I'm a little bit jealous of all the people that could go out and eat the tasty food and I'm seeing those pictures flooding. Um, my weekend has been full of uh, probably mostly working on my business. So I launched uh, my first video on TikTok on the weekend. Yes. <laughs> it actually did pretty well. Uh, nice. Yeah, got like over a thousand view in the first wow. day. So I was like, Okay, cool. With, with like zero, starting with like zero followers. So I thought that was pretty cool. Wow. Writing a book at the moment that I'm expecting to go out, hopefully uh, by Christmas. And yeah, working on this uh, confidence program uh, with Kaylee Chu as well, mm. Um, mm. collaborating. Mm. Um, I, I believe that's our mutual friend. So mm. yeah, it's, yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah, running, running hard at the moment. <laughs> wow, very ambitious. You've got a lot of things to do. I can tell. Yep. That's why your weekend's jam-packed with stuff, right? So. <laughs> yep. I like the feeling of being productive. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Sounds great. And yeah, I guess, well, you're writing a book. How long did, How long have you, when did you start writing a book so far? Oh, Sam, I've started writing this book like since a few years ago, to be right. honest. Um, so it's normal. And it's normal. been like, <laughs> it's been like chop and change, chop and change along the way. It's probably like, I've only changed my mind like 10 times on it. Wow. Uh, but recently, I would say in the last two months, I think, uh, two, three months, I've really focused on it now. It's mm. like, okay, scrap all the other stuff from before. Don't worry about it. Start yeah. scrap stuff from scratch yeah. and just put in all the ideas that I want to capture. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've been, it, it's probably like 80% done now. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, all the framework is there. It's focused on success and mm. it's got like half of the book is like about my personal stories, uh, mm -hmm. things that are really close to my heart on how I became the person I am now. And mm. the second part is like, how do people get their success? So mm. um, yeah, the, the focus have been probably really in the last two mm. months and I'm really excited because um, mm. it's all coming together now. <laughs> I, I can feel you. I remember when I first wrote my first book, I, I set a time frame of one of one year and then it actually got to like two years. So I said it was a little, it was a good experience. So, but uh, yeah, I went, overcame it and got into it. But it's good. Keep it up. Like you, know, you got you. the momentum because uh, yeah, writing books not it's not easy, easy stuff. Like you need to put use a lot of um, like brain energy to figure out how like what you're gonna write in the book, etc. And yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, can you tell me a bit about what your book's gonna be about, or is it a secret? yeah it, no it's focused on success it's totally focused on success it's um like it's a reflection on things that's happened in my life that really made me become the person i am now yep. like yep. why did those things impact me so hard yeah for me to have this like success mindset and mm -hmm. even though my experience is my own i've reflected on that on what the reader can draw on for their life because yeah. what i found that um that makes people shift generally it's if they have like a huge health scare or like something dramatic happened to them that's when they make real change mm -hmm. but why should we have to wait for something terrible like a terrible news usually mm -hmm. before we like shake ourselves up mm -hmm. so i bring in the urgency of that in the book yeah to like come on guys <laughs> let's go let's yeah. do it yeah, don't don't wait for that to happen. Like mm, focus, mm. focus, focus on your future. That's what it's, mm. that's what it's about. Mm. And that ties along with what you're doing now as a accountability coach, right? Yes, that's mm. right. Be accountable yeah. for your life. 
sounds great. And what what is your book called? What title is it called? Ah, uh, see the title. I have a title, <laughs> uh, but it may That's change. Pretty important. So, That's pretty important to get a title. Look, at the moment, the title is "Focus or Die." Oh, okay. Like wow. the no bullshit way to success. Wow. I like not it. sure if it's you're not sure if it's gonna be the title. Uh, I like it. it. I know it's very in your face. Um, it's intended for. that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it cool. draws on my my view of when I'm on a motorbike. That's oh, okay. Mm. So when I'm on a bike, I have to have full focus. Mm. Otherwise, you would literally die. <laughs> like you have to bring yes, everything. Yeah. yeah, you have to live in the presence when you're on. A machine that's going fast because yeah. you know your life is on the line this it's not like in a car you've got like kind of like a cage around you and you yeah. feel like you're protected and all yeah. that so people's attention get diverted right like they can mm. be drinking a coffee they can be chatting they can be doing all sorts of stuff as opposed to focusing on the road mm -hmm. you can't do any of that when you're on a motorbike mm -hmm. um and because the urgency is there when you're on a bike i i just think if we brought that same urgency in our normal life because that's why people don't take action, right? Like you think you have all this time, yep. you can do it later, you can do it later instead yeah. of actually living in the presence. Yep, yep. So that's the analogy I'm bringing mm. in for the book. Nice. So you're talking about a lot of people procrastinate on things, but they don't take action, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. And I don't think people procrastinate because they are lazy. They, they procrastinate because they don't have clarity. Mm, um, and, and to get that, well you have to either go learn it by paying for a course or learn it from somebody else. Um, and it's really about finding like a mentor or a coach that has, or a friend, like to someone that has got the result that you want in your life and ask them for advice or mimic that strategy. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the biggest lesson in my own life. It's like, there's a lot of things that I would have saved so much time yep. um, if I actually just asked for help. Um, yeah that's true yeah, that's true. yeah. yeah it, like, and, and that's hard like because you know most of us have kind of like this ego of like yeah i can do it myself but i don't, I don't need anyone and yeah, i don't want to come across weak yeah. um yeah. but we get so much further so much faster with assistance yeah definitely like especially if they walk the walk um and then talk the talk like they had the experience before like then they can fast track you that's what matters the most so yeah yeah exactly um then you don't have to fall for like the same mistakes yeah, <laughs> they true. can like give you hints uh on like yeah the pitfall and the, yeah. the best strategies i guess yeah i guess it's like a life hack like it's just, yeah, just yeah. give, give me like a big shortcut like, that kind of thing i know how you, i know what you, i know what you mean so yeah yeah so cool and your books uh genre what is gonna be enough oh the genre yeah Mm. not non-fiction uh self-help or well, what, what is it yeah probably is a self-help book yep. uh, it'll go in there um, no fiction, yeah. but i think i'll poke around the category and see if uh yeah <laughs> to see if there's a more suitable one but yeah it falls into that yeah re yeah research about it because it's um yeah it's just the genre that you can look into and and did you find any mentor to write this book or you just wrote it yourself no, I wrote it all myself, like every single oh, word. Well, um, respect. Yeah, <laughs> that, cool. yeah, like I want it to be authentic. And to be honest, nobody can write my story. Like mm. most of the book is drawing on my own experience. So yeah, yeah there's no way I can get somebody else to write that. Mm. It just wouldn't come across the same mm. way. Like I yeah. want my own tone through the book. Yeah. Um, I probably will have like an editor go through it. Yep. Um, just to make sure grammatically it sounds yeah, you know it's correct yeah um, but yeah no it's it's all for, um for my for my for myself yeah nice excited for you <laughs> thank you great job so yeah um that's cool so <clears throat> so tell me a little bit about yourself uh what do you like to do outside of work camps what's your hobbies what's your passions when i'm not working yeah but i'm not working um before I would like to jump on the bike, uh, go for a cruise. Wow. Uh, but at the Motorbike, moment, yeah. that's can't do that. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, the bike's been sitting there collecting dust. So has my car. It's also kind of been sitting there oh, really? collecting a bit of dust. Um, yeah, we've we'll been much. Sad. <laughs> um, so, yeah, since I can't do that. Um, but previously, I like to do things that's 
like active. I like going outdoor. I love going for like a hike, but not mm. any hike, like a hike with a reward. I, I love the kind of hikes that mm. makes me feel bonded to nature and uh, with a beautiful view at the end. So that mm. could be like a coastal walk or mm. like rewarded with a waterfall or something, mm. something like that, mm. um, where I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. That was worth tracking for. Mm. Nice. <laughs> I, I like I like doing that um, sports wise or um, that from that front I used yeah. to play badminton a lot like oh, every okay. week nice but uh, yeah again uh, because of COVID just haven't been able to do that so I've been definitely doing less exercise mm. um, and when it comes to winter time and maybe this is just uh, this is more like a hope hopefully yeah. Maybe come January, um, I can go to Japan and hit the slope for snowboarding. Mm, That's what uh, I like to do during winter time. Yeah. And yeah, so I've got my fingers fingers crossed mm. for that one. <laughs> That's cool. So you like to go, like you like to go snow snow snows every time during winter. Yeah, time. I've been going every year. I've been going to Japan, then going to Canada, um, went to oh. Switzerland. So oh. yes, yeah, snowboarding is pretty fun to me carving down the mountain <laughs> yeah what about what about uh sydney now how about in australia do you do you go there much or you go to overseas more yeah go to the go to the one um at threadbow yep. as well yep. um or perisher i've yep. uh, been to both multiple times yep the australia slopes is just not as fun <laughs> like that it is like yeah. our our snow is not like fluffy enough. Like mm. the ones in Japan and Canada, it's like yeah. you can fall and it's like a bed of um, oh, right. snow. Cloud. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. It's like a yeah. like a move your hands around it and you have like a yeah. Do the snow angel and you'll yeah, be melted it. into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I guess it's more powdery in uh, other places. Yeah, I actually wanted to go. Uh, this year, like in terms of snow, but there was COVID hit. Just hurt us go like, oh, well, can't really do much about yeah. it. Yeah. Do you ski or snowboard? Uh ski, ski, ski. Oh, cool. But I want to try a snowboard. But I'm actually yeah. I'll tell you something, I'll tell you a secret. Uh, I'm really okay. like I'm very I afraid always of like this for secret. What was that? I'm really afraid of heights. So uh, are so, you? Yeah, yeah. So I went up so actually what happened was I was with my friends, my I went up first time skiing and it took me to like Fredbo, the highest mountain, like my Kosciuszko. I was like, I went up there and then I was like shivering already, like, I, because I can't see the bottom of the height. <laughs> and then I was, like, I was like, screw it. I'm just going to go back, go back to the lift right there. And I was like, oh, no, gonna, you didn't. No. <laughs> and then the lift was very shaky. I was like, oh, crap. It's kind of like a life and death situation for me. I was like, oh my God. I'm not, that's it. I was like, oh, Sam, like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say it. I just got that high phobia. Just, I don't know why. Just, uh, yeah. just conquer through confidence, man. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll give it a go. But last time it was like, I'm just, well, I was so scared. Yeah. I'll take like, you with me next time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, sure. I, can teach <laughs> I think, yeah, a lot of them, you can't see the bottom, but that's kind of okay. You only need to see, you know, the next 10 meters. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, what my, that's what my friend said as well. Focus on the outside, not on the, that and uh yeah yeah just further just look further deeper not not just very close and, uh, yeah yeah you'll yeah. be all right yeah yeah so uh, yeah so tell me um well what made you not uh, get fascinated yet what made me what sorry uh not fascinated like is in covid covid fascinated oh not vaccinated yeah. um <laughs> this one is a bit of a sensitive topic isn't it okay, okay we better not do um, it then <laughs> Yeah, no, um, <laughs> the reason I'm not is because, and obviously I don't know really, this is just intuitively how I feel. Yep. Um, I feel like we are all under a bit of a human experiment, like a huge one. <laughs> um, I feel like in 30 years time, I'm going to flip the history book and it's like, the biggest human trial or something <laughs> like, um i just think that there could be a lot of uh powerful people there that's just seeing like almost like a marketing thing like how much fomo can we instill in people to get them to take action mm. um look i'm perfectly healthy i've done a blood test recently yep. everything is on point yeah so with a hundred percent um 
certainty, like my health is in tip top shape. Yep. I believe even if I caught COVID, um, I would be able to battle it out. So mm. I trust my body to do that. Yep, yep. And I believe the natural antibodies that I would form if yep. I were to catch it, yep. I would yep. be able to fight it off and it would yep. be better for my body than injecting something which I feel is going to jeopardize my immunity um, mm. to for it to do its own thing. Mm. Um, and I don't want the interruption. But personal choice, not saying if it's right or wrong. Um, yeah, I fully respect people that's made the choice. And a yep. lot of that is not just health. Like um, there's other people in the house for consideration. Like I, I'm on my own. So like yep. I know that I'm not putting anybody else at risk. Yeah. Um, yep. People yep. would have, you know, their grandmother or their kids um, and other people to think of. That's another, that's a fact that they have to consider um, as, as well as, you know, people are, at work if they may be placed up on them like an almost like an obligation that they can't um that they don't really have a choice um, yep. plus the freedom that we're losing by not having having that um and that's another thing that's pushing people to do it um i'm okay to lose some freedom for now because yep. i've done heaps of traveling i've traveled to more than 30 countries already prior to this whole covid thing so most yep. of that stuff is it's checked off in my bucket list um very cool so i i feel okay about it Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I guess everyone has their own perspectives. So, but I guess uh, you're just a little bit disadvantaged now. Like, you can't go to restaurants to dine in and uh, some activities. But as long as you're okay with it, then you know, that's what it matters. So, like, if you're not yeah. fussed about it, then yeah. You've taken the double dose? Yeah. 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 So, now I'm, I'm that kind of guy that wants to be, have more security. Like, I was just trying to weigh the, weigh the pros and cons. Like, if I don't take the fast in and I and catch COVID, I don't know what, what will happen. So, trying to be on the safe side. But on the other hand, I know where you, I know, I know, I know where you're coming from. Like, it might have like I thought like like you know, like I'm scared of like like a, like being in a human trial. Like, <clears throat> I might be yeah, I'm like um, yeah, like you don't know what what will happen in the in the future if, when you take that um, that fast in dose might might have some sort of reaction or side effects. So that's why like. They need, you need like a third dose now, like a boost because not, the fast is not going to like protect you forever. Yeah. So that's why you need to take it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's the first time. Pros yeah. and cons is it's hard to weigh out when you don't really know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess we make our own decision and um, yeah. whatever consequences yours. we have to take those as well. That's it. The body's yours. <laughs> you should have gone protesting. <laughs> Oh, I'm not really for the protest. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, just joking. I'm not really for the, for that. Yeah. Stuff. Cool. No worries. Cool. So um, yeah, comes. How? What made you do what you do now? Like, as in, uh, you you're an accountability coach, right? Yes. What? How did you get that idea? And yeah, why? How, how did you start it? Like, what? How, how did you get the idea? That kind of stuff. Probably because I've been an accountant for like the last. 15 or so years working oh, yeah. in a corporate life yeah. um it's a bit of a i guess there's a bit of a spin from that um uh, i've been working for so long in the office yeah. um looking after budgets and delivering a month-end report yeah. um that i actually realized accounting is not really the thing that i love to do mm. like i do good in it yeah. um yeah. and I get paid well for it yep. and there's a lot of respect that comes with it in the office. Yep. Um, I just wanted to do something more than that. Um, so I started uh, veering off to do project work yep. and I love that so much more because it's not the mundane kind of like month and like the same thing sort of every month. Yep. It's when it's about delivering projects, it's like, it's a different project every time you yep. get different teams and yep like new deadlines and scopes and like it's just kind of cool to deliver deliver an outcome um that's that's new mm -hmm. um so i enjoy doing projects a lot more and i've and i've um over whilst i was like doing the project work my last job was actually in the change team mm -hmm. um, so i would hold a team accountable um to deliver these changes and and we would have like you know 50 or more active project at any given time. Yeah. Um, so managing those. And part of doing that, I just, now I just 
got to that point, I was like, you know what? Life is basically one big project. Whatever it is that you want to do, I just take the corporate concept uh, on how I track the projects um, along the way, like the milestone, when do we have to do it by, what priority is it, mm-hmm. and make sure that those are done. So I just bring it into people's life. It's like, what do you want to achieve? So let's do that. When do you want to do it by? Is it high priority? Is it low priority for you? Um, if you want to make a certain amount of money, well, what is it? Like, what are you delivering? Like, how are you going to make that money? Because mm-hmm. usually people have the idea that, you know, I want to do this thing, but it's just out there. They have no real plan or what's in between. Like, what's the milestones in between? Like, what, what are you measuring? What's the metrics? They don't have any of that. And that's why things don't get done. So um, I want to see people do more, be better, and mm. do the things that matter to them and achieve those goals. Mm. Um, I just found it so much more fulfilling watching people's life um, transform. So that's what brought me to be the accountability coach. Interesting. So, oh, that's very cool. So um, basically you help people to gain productivity, right? Not, not just to, yeah, to not perform, but to outperform them more. Yeah. So. Yeah, Sam, it's like, you know, I got to this point where earlier on, I was very focused on success, yep. but the definition of success has changed for me. So it's broadened before success meant like money and status to me. And yeah. that's why I was chasing that corporate life. Yeah. Um, but then I realized success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Mm-hmm. Tony Robbins kind of slapped that across my face when I went to one of his programs. Yeah. Um, along with other things that I've done, which is like kind of, you know, leading me to that same um, direction. Yeah. So yeah, with that in mind, it's like, okay, well, how do I get this fulfillment thing then? You know. <laughs> so I went on this journey of, um, well, what, what is my life purpose? Like, how do I add value to this world? Like, what on earth am I even doing here? Like, it, by the time I'm like no longer here, but I'm like on my deathbed, what would I have wished I have done? What legacy do I want to leave? Mm. So with that in mind, I just backtrack now. It's like, okay, well, if I want, if I want to be able to help people, if I want people to do more, get out of their comfort zone, what, what do I have to do to mm-hmm. get them there? Yep. And, and I stopped, I'm like an introvert. Like I don't like the whole social media. I don't like that stuff. I don't yep. like putting myself out there. But then I just came to this point where I realized if I want to help people, well, I have to drive them somehow. Yep. And that just means I have to put my voice out there. So mm. um, I go out of my comfort zone to, to, to put my voice out so that other people can um, feel that and do more in their life. Yep. Yeah. It's cool. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Like what you said, it's not easy. Like, um, like I'm that kind of person as well. Like, I don't like that publicity, but I guess like when you're doing something like this, you need to get yourself out there. So um yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah so pretty much on the same shoes as you, like uh kind of get like introverted, but then like, I feel nervous all the time, like always doing like Facebook videos and lies and all this kind of stuff. Just feel a bit uncomfortable, but I guess you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable in, in a way. So uh yeah. Yeah, 100%. And someone that sees you would um, resonate with you. And that's what we can, each one of us can bring because people will resonate to different personality. Um, they might see you and go, wow, you, you remind me of myself. Like, I feel that way. Um, he's kind of a bit like me. And then if you can do it, then it gives people hope too. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, if he can do it, I can do it too. Like, I think what gets people stuck is that, you know, they might see someone like, let's just say Tony right yeah. he's this way up there but it's very hard to reach like a Tony like people aren't aspiring to be on stage and to change billions of life like that's not what they're looking for yeah. and you can't even work with Tony anyway that'll probably cost like millions of dollars right yeah, sure. but somebody that's much more accessible and that they can relate to to your stories they're going to feel a lot closer to you and that's why you know I always encourage people to put your voice out there like each of us have our own unique story and yep. you just never know how you touch people's life by mm. just saying that one thing or that one video um it can, it can literally change somebody's life totally agree with you so yeah yeah that's really about telling your your past experience and putting in this story so that's what drives people to uh like trust you inspire people so uh, yeah that's really cool. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, your background is pretty interesting. 
And uh, the second last question is, how do you build trust with people? Like uh, I was asked this in every interview, like what's the secret behind uh, buildings? Like when you socialize with people, what's your number one uh, secret to do that? <laughs> secret to, to build that connection. You yeah. know what? The biggest secret is to just provide value first. Hmm. Provide value upfront. That's what I do. Um, for me, my business, there's no real need for a sales pitch or anything like that. Yeah. It's, I just provide value in terms of somebody can come up to me, they may message me and go, um, you know, I don't feel good. I feel depressed or, you know, I'm really struggling with my business. And yeah. I'm like, hey, let, let's jump on a call. Um, yeah. And if they were too scared to jump on a call, which which I have had people like that. They're like, oh, I'm too anxious to do that. Like, I, yeah. I can't get on the camera or I don't really feel like talking. That's like, that's okay. I'll just text them back. Mm -hmm. But even in those texts um, can still send very powerful messages or voicemails to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, none of those things are charged. I'm just providing value up front yeah. because I care about people. And by doing that, you know, it can change them and those ones that have found it to be very helpful um they've just actually asked me it's like oh wow that that's that's so good um like thank you so much for the advice and you know how can we how you know what is it like working for you how can we do more of that um so people will just come up to me that's why i don't find there's any need to um you know when people are running a business and they're trying to like do so many things and put out ads and all that. It's like, none of that is really needed. If you're scared of social media content, well, it's, it's, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to load like stacks of them. It's really just about genuinely caring for people and providing value up front. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. I guess when you provide value, I guess, um, yeah, it's of, uh, it's of use to them. Like it's very, um, yeah. Good, good content that you can uh, provide them which is cool nice yeah and and i, I actually put, i actually like every week i actually schedule a time where i'm just providing like a free service mm -hmm. like and i do a number of things i could be taking i carve out time where i'm just talking to people uh, um just because i want to chat to people and get to know them like build some new connection you never know where it goes sometimes we could end up collaborating on something yep. sometimes it's just an exchange of ideas Sometimes mm -hmm. I just maybe recommend them a book to read um, mm -hmm. or I help them build up their profile. Like, um, but yeah, like every week I carve out time to just yep. um, do, do things and pay it forward. Cause mm. I, cause I can. It's, and it's not, it's nice to do that. Mm. Yeah. That's really cool. That's what uh, bringing value is all about. Like giving free value and then they'll trust you more and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's very cool. Well, great. That's cool. So again, it comes. Um, that's, that's pretty much <laughs> what did you say. <laughs> what, what did you mean? Yeah, I was like, that's the secret to building relationships. That's it. That's it. Cool. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, um, that draws to the last question. Uh, how do we find more about you, Cam? Yeah. How can you? How can the viewers find more about you? Uh, what's your website and your social media accounts? Oh, look, I mostly hang out on Facebook. So if you just look up Cam Spong, so. K A R M S F U N G, you'll find me. Uh, always hang out on Facebook. I've recently started hanging out at TikTok. So, same calm spoon, just look me up. Yeah. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on LinkedIn if you want to actually see my background. I'm like a very strong uh, business background. Yep. So, yeah, if you want to see what I uh, certificates or three letters that I hold or anything like that, you can always jump in there for the professionalism. Uh, but yeah, those would be the, the two best place, um, nice. I would say, TikTok and Facebook. Just cool. reach out. I, will, I actually personally uh, look after those accounts. So if you write to me, I would always write back. Sounds good. And how, how, how about your website? Do you have a website? or? Oh, yeah. oh I do. But you know, I, I'm not even going to try because it's true. Yeah. I, I don't put a lot of, I haven't really built up my website um, yep. too much at the moment. Um, yep. But yeah, if you want to looking for, testimonials um you can look it up on uh, my facebook page on the excel purpose mm. um that's my company um Good. my my website i don't put a lot of focus on there because i place most of my focus actually talking to people <laughs> yeah making the actual connection mm. i find that most um mostly people connect with me from 
the interaction I'm having with them and then they tell their friends about yeah. about me. So that, that's where my, you know, like my traffic, so-called traffic comes from. It's it's not through a webpage or anything like that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I found that that's worked really well for me. Mm. That's cool. Whatever works well for you, is the, that's what matters. So it's really cool. So cool. Yeah, so viewers, uh, you know how to connect with uh, Khan's phone. Uh, she's an amazing lady, very inspirational. If you want to know more about her, connect with her through the social media uh, mediums. And I'll be putting it uh, like a, um, a screen later on, like put it on, uh, upload it on YouTube and uh, podcasts. So Carbs, I had a great time with you. Uh, and thanks for, yeah, thanks for joining in the interview. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you, Sam. Nice no chatting worries. to you. No worries, Carbs. Give me a touch and uh, have a good one. We'll do. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, how's that? Uh